Well, 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 someone's in a hurry. Just following orders. Funny, I never took you for the type. Can't all be as obedient as you, Gav. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Fine day for a little mischief, wouldn't you say? Is this all of us? Actually, Gav won't be coming. Just the three of us, then? Drake's head is the keystone of the Empire. Oriflam's in chaos, yes, but that doesn't mean we can march an army through her gates. The fewer our numbers, the better our chances of going unnoticed. And should that plan fail, well, we have our icons to fall back on. Sid, I... I don't know if I can. The Freed still seems to... come and go as he pleases. Ordinarily, Prime and Icon comes naturally to a dominance. But then, you are no ordinary dominance. Well, he's still got the blessing of the Phoenix, doesn't he? Not to mention what he sucked out of Garuda. And did I ever tell you about how he was once the greatest shield in Rosaria? You know, I reckon he could probably cause a path out of the capital on his own, if need be. Let's try not to find out. We're less likely to be spotted if we travel separately. I'll meet you in Northreach in a few days. You two behave now. <sighs> So, we're meeting in Northreach. But will I find Sid and Jill before this dame finds me? You know, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure what it is that Sid is planning to do once we get to the capital. I mean, what are we going to do, run up and bash the giant crystal to make it stop doing magic stuff? I don't know. Maybe we're there just to pay old mama a visit. He hasn't really led us astray yet, though. So I guess we should trust him. But then again, he did sort of... FedEx Benedictus head to that giant motherfucker, so I mean, he might be a little screwed in the head too. But it looks like we've been separated again now. This game seems to slide the side characters, the companions, in and out of the story a lot. I wonder if that's something that the game is going to do the entire time. Because if you look at something like, well, the earlier, uh, the other games in the series, like say Final Fantasy VII. The game largely made a decision for you at what points in the game you'd have what characters in your party, and then once you left Midgar, it would give you the ability to swap them in and out. And then only rarely making the choice for you from that point forward. Um, 8, Final Fantasy 8, for the most part, in the early parts of the game, went and made the decision what characters you'd have in your party. Not, uh, 9 was even... Uh, a greater example because it was very plot focused in what characters it put in your party going through the early uh, maybe even the first half of the game really before opening up more uniting all your characters together this one you're only really even playing as Clive you're not playing as the companion characters they're not members of your party at all I have no control over them and it seems like perhaps we're not going to have more than one. I mean, I'm not counting Torgal here, because he's not speaking. <laughs> and he always seems to be here. Or almost always seems to be here. He wasn't there in that weird dream fight against Ifrit, but he's following me around now. So it seems like we're not going to be carrying around like a party of characters. It's going to be Clive, it's going to be Torgal, and it's going to be Somebody else, sometimes. Like, not now. But we're heading... <laughs> we're heading out here, and we're supposed to find, um... Sid and Jill. This... I guess not a whole lot's gonna be happening now, because it seems like... Uh, I mean, Clive will talk to himself, and he'll talk to Torgal, and he'll talk to... At times, anyway. He will talk to NPCs. But he does kind of need a second character following him around to kind of drive the plot a little bit. 
He's a very self-conscious person. Like we had seen when he had mentioned, like, oh, well, I can't control Ifrit. And then Sid went and said, like, well, you can do this. Uh, well, Gav said, well, you can use this Phoenix magic. And then Sid's like, well, you can also use whatever it was you got from Garuda. It's like, you're... And you're, like, really skilled anyway. So, like, you can... You can do, um... A lot of amazing things anyway. And Clive... Like, it was essentially a compliment. And Clive just doesn't know how to take it. So he's not a particularly sociable person. He's been through a lot of stuff. And it sort of scarred him emotionally. And he's not really that good at talking to people. <laughs> Which is why I figure any point in the game where he's going to be on his own is going to be a little bit of a flat part of the story. So he's going to sort of need a second character there, essentially, to speak for him. I mean, when... or to speak to him. Somebody who can force... essentially force him into situations and bounce, like, interaction off of him. When Jill was with him, Jill was... Oh, it's also the fact that he's perceived as a slave because of the tattoo on his face and a lot of people won't even speak to him on account of having that tattoo so that's gonna even further hinder his ability to interact with other characters which is why like when Jill was with him Jill was basically the one speaking like walks up walks up to an NPC and then Jill speaks to them and he even apologizes to her for her having to do that and, which is a bit of a, a funny thing. So anytime he's on his own, it's it's definitely uh, a different story dynamic. Honestly, it's probably not even a good idea that he's wandering around on his own out here, considering the tattoo on his face. He can't hide the fact that he used to be a slave. And anybody who sees him is going to perceive him as one, and that could attract a lot of unwanted attention, him wandering around out here on his own wearing uh, the armor or the uniform or whatever of his late father that's something that's going to attract attention as well I guess more so depending on where you're going to end up being, he was recognized so I'd probably not have him travel on his own, if somebody runs across him it could be an ugly situation Look at all these freaking... This game definitely puts a lot of effort into displaying a lot of sort of particle effects when the attacks are going on. It has... A, the graphic style is a little bit strange in the sense that, like, it, it does, in a sense, go for a realistic art style, but not as realistic as a lot of other games in the last few years. Like, if you compare this to... I'm, I don't want to say Elden Ring, but um, just think, just sticking a name out there of a game that went for a realistic art style was The Last of Us Part Two. It went balls to the wall in terms of character detail, their faces, their clothing, all that kind of stuff. And in a sense, in a in a video game, it's kind of a strange thing because you get more and more realistic. Like, the way a video game renders a scene has a strange uh, visual effect on them. Because if you look at a person, you will see them in, like, sort of the ultimate fidelity. If you look at a person in real life, that is. You'll see them in the sort of ultimate of fill death fidelity because it is absolutely real life what you're looking at. And you can see, like, all the wrinkles, all the pores, all that kind of stuff. But because it is real life and you tend to stand a few feet away from a person when speaking to them, unless you're a Seinfeld character. Um, so the fact that they have these imperfections in their face and these imperfections in their clothes and all that kind of stuff has a tendency to sort of blend in with the rest of their facial features. But then you go and you look at something like The Last of Us Part Two, and they have these high detail characters and they have all of the blemishes and imperfections in their skin and all that kind of stuff. 
it kind of shows more than it would in real life. Even if it is very realistic and you, like if you move in close to a real person's face and you compare it side by side with the video game that, say, a character's portrait may be based on, they may look identical even, but it'll show for some reason more in the video game. Now you look at this game here, and it went for a bit of an unusual art style that some people were giving it crap for uh, when it was shown in pre-release. Because it doesn't have such a ridiculous level of fidelity in the faces. Now there is a lot of detail, and there is a lot of fidelity, but it doesn't show a whole lot of um, skin texture and pores and other kinds of blemishes on the face. And that results in a little bit of a soft appearance, which isn't typical in a modern game. So a lot of people, like, that that's something that they reacted negatively to. But I'd say, like, it, it looks fine to begin with. There is plenty of detail. It's strange that this is the kind of thing nowadays that we consider low detail. But I think it kind of emulates the way you would actually look at a person in real life. Like, you're unlikely to focus on the pores of a person's face. Even if you do see them, it's not going to draw your attention. In this game, those kinds of details just really aren't present. It does kind of seem a little bit strange that a lot of the characters are a little bit dead-faced, though. Especially Jill. It looks like she has Botox injections. But, you know, I'm, I'm just whining now. A moment, my lady. A moment? <laughs> I doubt you could afford even that much of my time. Branded. My mistake. No, mine. Upon reflection, you don't have the scent of a branded about you. The flowers. Otto always did know how to please me. More than Sid ever did anyway. Do you think you could please me, Clive? You're the dame. Let us leave such impersonal titles to my less preferred clientele. You can call me Isabel. Otto assured me I could trust you. I can trust you, can't I? You can trust me, yes, but... Why would you... Help you? Because that's what we do. Long ago, Sid did me a kindness when no one else would. I have never forgotten that. Without it, I would not be where I am today. And so, I make it a point to do the same whenever possible. Which brings us here. To the final obstacle between you and whatever it is you seek in the holy capital. I fear the guards are not likely to let a masterless bearer pass unmolested, unless... Unless... <laughs> unless, of course, his master deign to appear. Yes, that will do nicely. But... I shall expect a favor in return. Wait, what? <sighs> However, do make a fruit not getting any fresher. What the hell are you doing? Tut tut. We cannot have people thinking I tolerate disobedience from my branded. The men who gave me this are no more my masters than you are. But it's not as if I can hide it. 
From the moment you acquired it, that brand has done naught but take. But today, it is going to give you exactly what you want. Just play along. Madame, back to the vial already? But of course, we must make ready to welcome you, my dear. And who might this be? Why, my new escort. The streets aren't safe for a girl, what with all the royalists about. <laughs> well, don't work him too hard. Well, that rather depends on you now, doesn't it? I'll see you all at sunset. Oi, hold up. <sighs> Another fucking branded. Well, you're lucky you're with the dame. Now get out of my sight, filth. That wasn't so bad. Wasn't so bad. They might have recognized me. But they didn't. And even if they had, they wouldn't have done anything about it. The gentlemen of the garrison are some of my best customers. We have an arrangement, as do you and I. Now, if you'd care to follow me, we can speak more at the Vale. Doesn't seem like I have much of a choice. Well, she got us through the gate at least. Something else I want to add to what I was saying previously is that there is a bit of a difference in terms of like animations. You have the uh, regular cutscenes that we had just seen earlier, and Isabel is very animated in the way she interacts with with um, Clive. And then that second scene after she runs off and she stands there statically. The lighting is also different too does make it feel a little bit cheaper and the difference is pretty drastic and it is kind of jarring but anyway uh 17 minutes i'll end the episode thanks for watching